As Seventh-day Adventists, we were given uh, a great commission, and that commission uh, is found in uh, Revelation chapter 14, uh, verses uh, 6 uh, through 12. I'd like you to, uh, to open your Bible with me to the book of 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And a part of that mission there is to expose uh, the counterfeit in these last days. Part of that uh, great commission that has been given to Seventh-day Adventists uh, is to uh, enlighten the world with the glory of Jesus Christ and at the same time, as I mentioned, to expose uh, the Antichrist, uh, to expose uh, the men of sin as the Apostle Paul uh, describes here in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Notice the Bible says, beginning in verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that he be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Verse 3, notice that verse there with me. Let no man deceive you by any means. For what reason? For that day, the second coming, shall not come. Why? Except there come a falling away first, and the, that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So we see there are two events there that are connected with the second coming of Jesus Christ. The first one is the falling away. The second one says that the men of sin, as a result of the falling away, that the men of sin will be revealed. So those two events, along with many signs and wonders that Jesus spoke of in Matthew chapter 24, those two events must take place before Jesus comes. And as we see these things developing, the falling away, and then the men of sin will be revealed, we know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is coming again. Now the falling away, the expression falling away means in the Greek is apostasia, which means apostasy. Now that's, that's not just referring to the papal church, the Roman church, or apostate Protestantism, but this is also referring to Seventh-day Adventists. But at the same time, who was given again the Great Commission to expose the men of sin? It was Seventh-day Adventists who was given this Great Commission. Notice with me what it says here from Testimony to Ministers, page 11. She says, in the very time in which we live, the Lord has called His people and has given them a message to bear. And what's that message? He has called them to do what? To expose the wickedness of the men of sin who has made the Sunday law a distinctive power, who has thought to change times and laws and to oppress the people of God, who stand firmly to honor Him by keeping the only true Sabbath, the Sabbath of creation, as holy unto the Lord. So in the very time in which we live, God has raised a Seventh-day Adventist to do what again? Based on what we just read there, to expose the wickedness, hence wickedness there, we'll come back to that, the wickedness of the men of sin, to expose the papacy, to expose the Pope of Rome because of its wickedness. But again, this is exactly what the Apostle Paul says. Let's read verse 3 again. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away, the apostasy, apostasia, first, and that men of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And the word revealed there means to expose. This is exactly what Sister White just said there that the Seventh-day Adventist was raised by God to expose the men of sin, to expose the wickedness of the men of sin. But if that is, notice with me, if that is our duty, 
if that is a part of our mission, the question is, can we mingle with them or should we mingle with them? Should we associate ourselves with the papacy, with Rome, with the, the Vatican in any shape or form? No, we cannot do that. If we do this, that means uh, we have uh, gi given uh, or we have chosen a different master, I should say. We have chosen a different master because the master, Jesus, has given us a specific message and that message is to expose the papacy. We cannot be in association with uh, the papacy and, and, and uh, expose the papacy at the same time. We cannot serve uh, two masters. Let's go to the book of Amos. We, ha we have to choose uh, which one of uh, the Christ that we are going to walk with. It's either we're going to walk with uh, the Antichrist or we're going to walk up with uh, Jesus, the Son of God. Let's go to the book of Amos chapter 3. Notice with me in the book of Amos chapter 3. And the Bible says, again, we'll begin in verse 1. Again, uh, the question again was, which Christ are we going to follow or we're going to walk with? We cannot associate ourselves with the Pope of Rome when our mission or part of our mission is to expose Rome. Verse 1, chapter 3 of Amos. Hear this word, that the Lord have spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for what? For all your iniquities. Notice the question there. Can two walk together except they be what? Except they be agreed. So the question again was, can two walk together except they agree? So if we see that our leaders are meeting with the men of sin, it is because they are in some kind of agreement. Otherwise, they would be as far as uh, the east is from uh, the west. Because the Bible says, can two walk together unless they agree? Verse 4, will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his uh, den if he have uh, nothing or taken uh, nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gain uh, is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall, notice verse 6, a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord have not done it? Surely the Lord God will do what? Nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Did God reveal these things to the prophet that he has given to this movement, Ellen G. White, yes. And uh, the councils are as plain as uh, crystal, as clear as crystal. We must stay away from the papacy. We must not associate ourselves with the papacy in any shape uh, and form. We, we were told it is a backsliding church uh, that uh, lessons is this its distance uh, from himself and the papacy. So that means uh, we should remain very far away from, the, from uh, the papacy. Can two, again the Bible says, walk together unless uh, they are in some kind of agreement. Let's go with me to the book of Genesis chapter 5. In Genesis chapter 5, uh, this is describing uh, the account of uh, Enoch. Enoch walked with God, he separated himself from the world. And as a result, notice now, Genesis chapter 5, the Bible says of Enoch, beginning in verse 21, And Enoch lived sixty and five years, and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked, notice now, with God, after he begot Methuselah three hundred years, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five, and five years. And Enoch again, notice, walked with God. And he was not, 
for God took him. So Enoch had chosen his master, and his master was Jehovah, was God. He walked with God, and he was not. And this will be our lot in these last days, as we are awaiting the second coming of Jesus Christ. If we walk with him as Enoch walked with God, then uh, we will be no more here in this, uh, in, on this earth. We will be with him. When he comes, he will take us uh, home. So we must choose our master. Can two walk together unless they agree? God was in agreement with Enoch. Enoch was in agreement uh, with God. Notice with me. Let's go to the book, uh, well, still in uh, Genesis, but this time chapter 6. Skip over now. Speaking of Noah, the Bible says uh, of Noah, Right before God sent a flood, verse 7 says, And the Lord said, I will destroy men whom I have created from the face of the earth, both men and beasts, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah, what happened to Noah? He found a grace in the eyes of the Lord. Why? Because he walked with the Lord, just like it said of Enoch, he walked with the Lord. Noah had chosen his uh, master. He separated himself uh, from the world. Then the Bible says in verse 9, These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah, notice what made the difference? He walked uh, with, uh, with God. So Noah walked with God. God. Noah had chosen his master as a result of uh, he, he, this was accounted to him for righteousness. We cannot walk together with the papacy and then having the righteousness of Jesus Christ uh, being imputed upon us. Notice, let's go to the book of Malachi, chapter 2 this time. In the book of uh, Malachi, the book of Malachi, chapter 2, we're going to. And notice with me what the Word of God says in the book of uh, Malachi, chapter 2. And again, we are looking at the men of sin. We are looking at how we need to choose our masters in these last days. We are again in the book of Malachi chapter 2. If God has raised this movement, as we know that he indeed did raise Seventh-day Adventists as a movement to walk with him to end up expose the papacy. God has raised this movement for such a time as this. Malachi chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. The Bible says, And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart, to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already because... Ye do not lay it to heart. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast, and one shall take you away with it. And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me, and was afraid before my name. Verse 6, notice with me. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me, he what? He walked with me in peace and equity, and did turn many away from what? From iniquity. So those who are walking with the Lord will do what? Will turn away from iniquity. But in this context here, who is the iniquity? It's the men of sin, the men, which is the papacy. What's the call again? The call of Revelation 14, verse 8, and Revelation 18 is uh, to call a people away from the iniquity, away from uh, the men of sin. As the Apostle Paul says, let's go back to 2 Thessalonians again, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. As the Apostle Paul says uh, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he says right before Jesus comes, there will be a falling away first uh, 
And then uh, verse 3 again, uh, let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come uh, except there come a falling away first, and that men of sin be revealed, the son uh, of uh, perdition. So there will be a falling away, then the son of men will, the son of perdition rather, or the men of sin uh, will be revealed, uh, which is the son uh, of perdition. Why? Verse 4 says, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or all that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And that's the same power the Bible tells us in Revelation 14 and 18 to call a people out because of her sins, because of her wickedness. And the Bible says, uh, because all the world has been made drunk by the wine of her fornication. And again, that is uh, the papacy. Speaking uh, of uh, the wine of her fornication, speaking of exposing the papacy, here's how the world has been made drunk by its wine. Notice with me from this article here. It says from uh, the Daily Californian, celebrities dress in Sunday, Best for 2018, notice now, Catholic theme Met Gala. That's May 11th, 2018. So it's the Catholic theme Met Gala. Notice now, let's continue to read. It says, Met Gala brings what? Brings designers, movie stars, and bishops in for what? For Catholic themed event. It says high fashion and a higher calling come together in a show called Heavenly Bodies. Fashion and the Catholic uh, imagination. Cardinal Timothy Dolan, Archbishop of uh, New York, gave his approval for the event because it's about, notice now, it's about what? Truth, goodness, and beauty, which means it's consistent with what? With Catholic beliefs. And uh, this event took place uh, just a few days ago where the so-called stars of Hollywood, which in reality are the fallen stars in Hollywood, joined together with the Catholic Church and they were literally making fun of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is the Antichrist, the men of sin that put this together. Notice with me another one here. It says, from the Washington Post, May 7th, 2018, Holy Hope Couture, which means a high uh, dressmaker or high fashion, Met Gala blends uh, fashion, uh, some religion. It says, the theme of this year's exhibit at the Metropolitan Museum of Arts Costume Institute, uh, Heavenly Bodies, Fashion, and the Catholic Imagination, which focuses on the influence of Catholicism on what? On fashion. Again, we are dealing with uh, the harlot there of the earth. As the Bible describes it in Revelation chapter 17, the mother of harlot and all the abomination of the world. And uh, this is the power we were told to expose. Notice now, another one here. It says uh, from CNBC, Met Gala 2018, Heavenly Bodies. Last night, the Metropolitan Museum of Art hosted the 2018 Met Gala with a star-studded guest list of celebs to celebrate the opening of Heavenly Bodies, fashion and the what? And the Catholic imagination. So where did that film come from? The world and all of these individuals from uh, who worship uh, Satan, uh, and they came together. Who invited them to that event? Uh, it was the Catholic Church. And uh, this is the power we were told to expose. Uh, it's a satanic power. It's a satanic church. Uh, that is uh, the Catholic Church. Notice with me another one here. It says, uh, from the Wall Street Journal, Heavenly Bodies, Fashion and the Catholic Imagination Review, a gift from the, notice, Sartorial Gods, May 10, 2018. The words themselves are dipped in gold and each has its glittering place in a hierarchy 
of a symbolic dress and timeless imagery. Notice, sun rays like spears, piercing the flock with light. Sacred, notice now, wounds, spilling blood, sacrificial and ecstatic. The cross, a design genuflection that is both abstract and transcendent. The martyred saints, the wicked angels, gift, relic, queries, housings, bits at bone, renunciation clothes in costume of material locks. And uh, that spells out what? All of that? Catholicism. As you can see in the picture there, you see them, uh, Madonna there, and you see the, the priest there, you see them uh, making a, a big mockery of uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, of the cross of Jesus Christ. Notice with me, another one here. It says, uh, from uh, Art News, May 10th, 2018, the Mets, heavenly bodies, show minds, Catholic, Catholicism for eye candy. And the result is both gorgeous and unsettling. Those who couldn't afford, though, notice now, the $30,000 ticket fee could watch behind a velvet rope as guests adorn in religiously inspired couture rafted over a red carpet leading into the museum. Rihanna led the way with a pearl encrusted tire and cleavage exposing a take off on the papal robes. It seemed uh, a fitting uh, prelude to a blockbuster exhibition that exuberantly and uh, indiscriminately mixes the what? The sacred and the and what else? And the profane. You see the reason why we were told to expose uh, this abomination? They are taking, they make no difference between the, the holy and, uh, and the unholy. They make no difference uh, between sin and, uh, and uh, righteousness. Uh, and that is uh, Catholicism uh, that brought all of these celebrities, uh, people of the world uh, together. And uh, uh, here's another one here. Met Gala 2018 uh, draws celebrities, sports stars, and fashion icons. Uh, that's from uh, Orlando Sentinel, May 10th, 2018. Uh, and uh, who's that in this, in this picture there? In this picture, you could see uh, several individuals there, but to the left there with that lady, that's uh, that uh, football player there from, from the New England Patriot. See, they are all in the same thing. And then to the right, you could see this man there who played Desmond Doss in the movie that came out not too long ago. Now, you talk to some uh, Seventh-day Adventists about that movie. Many of them went to see it. And the fact that this man was genuine and had given his heart to the Lord. But where was he? He was at this uh, satanic ritual there that uh, the papacy put, uh, put together. But this wasn't, wasn't it. Even politicians, as you could see, Mitt Romney there and also Michael Bloomberg. All of them were invited there. Why? Why politicians? What are they doing there? Well, they all had to go there to bow to the papacy. To the power that be. They have chosen their masters. Not Mitt Romney who is supposed to be a Christian, Mormon. What is he doing there? Where well, they all bow to the papacy. They all have chosen uh, their gods. They have chosen their Christ. These, that's the Christ, the papacy, that they are walking with. Notice now what Sister White says here. This is from uh, Review and Herald, uh, June 1st, 1886. This is the religion which Protestants, speaking of the papacy, which Protestants are beginning to look upon with so much favor and which will eventually be united with uh, Protestantism. This union will not, however, be effective by a change in Catholicism. For Roma never changes, she claims infallibility. It is Protestantism that will change. The adoption of liberal ideas on its part will bring it where it can class the hand of Catholicism. So this is that same power, this is satanic power that Protestantism is running to. As we read about in Revelation chapter 17, that, let's go to Revelation chapter 17, that she has daughters 
and the daughters uh, came uh, out from her during uh, the uh, dark ages uh, when uh, the uh, beast, the papacy, received uh, that uh, deadly blow, not just when Napoleon uh, sent General Berthier there, but the papacy started to receive that deadly blow way before that with men like Martin Luther, John Haas, when these men st stood up for the truth to expose uh, the wickedness uh, of the men of sin. We are in Revelation uh, chapter 17. And the Bible says, uh, verse 1, And there came uh, one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made uh, drunk with the wine uh, of her fornication. And uh, skip on down with me to verse 5, to verse two, 4 rather. And the woman uh, was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of what? Full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And she's the mother. She has daughters. And uh, as we just read uh, from Sister White, uh, the daughters uh, that came out of her as a result uh, of the Word of God that inspired men uh, to expose uh, the papacy, those daughters are going back to her. Let's read this once again. Uh, and we're going to see in the next slide, even Seventh-day Adventists, uh, more specifically now, the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, uh, is part of the daughters that are going after the papacy, not to expose her, but to join her. Let's read this once again from Review and Herald, June 1st, 1886. This is the religion, the papacy, which Protestants are beginning to look upon with so much favor and which will eventually be united with Protestantism. This union will not, however, be effective by a change in Catholicism. Pause there. So the union that's take, taking place, as we covered before, between uh, Catholicism and Protestantism, it's not because uh, Catholicism has changed its view. It's because Protestantism uh, has changed. They are no longer Protestants. Back to the screen. It says, for Roma never changes. She claims infallibility. It is Protestantism that will change. The adoption of liberal ideas on its part will bring it where it can clasp the hand of Catholicism. That means uh, they keep uh, drawing closer and closer to the mother. It's not the mother reaching out to them. It's them reaching out uh, to the mother. And it's the same thing that we have been seeing as we covered before. We saw we, pastors among us signing a document saying the protest is over. We are one with Rome. We have been so deceived by our leaders that many, in spite of the fact we are showing articles after articles showing the apostasy, showing the relationship, showing how, showing how we are in bed with uh, Roma, in spite of all of this, uh, many cannot fully see this. We, we are indeed in apostasy with the Roman church. Again, Sister White says, it is a backsliding church uh, that lessens its distance between itself uh, and the papacy. And again, uh, we saw D of Ganone going to Rome, shaking hands with Roma. Other pastors, Adventist pastors, doing the same thing. We saw Ted Wilson meeting with the fallen churches, with the representative of the papacy who called for Christian unity. And uh, here is uh, their defense. Here is uh, how they brainwashing Seventh-day Adventists to, let, to make you feel like it's okay, even using uh, 
misusing, I should say, Sister White Crowds uh, for their apostasy, for their mingling together with uh, these uh, fallen churches and the papacy. Notice what this article says here. It says, uh, from Adventist Review, May 5th, 2018, leader brings distinctly Adventist voice to international Christian gathering. Now, when you hear or read a headline like this, you would think that when it says Adventist voice, what's the first thing that, would, that should come to mind? The three angels' messages, that Adventist voice, exposing the papacy, that's an Adventist voice, glorifying Jesus, that's an Adventist voice. But that's not the, what this is about. This is just to put you to sleep. These men are deceiving us. Back to the screen. It says, notice now, Dr. Ganun Diop, Director of Public Affairs, and uh, what are those two words there? Religious uh, liberty. Pause there. Those two words there, again, as we covered before, religious freedom or religious liberty, that's what they are using as a platform for this apostasy, to meet with these other fallen churches. Back to the screen. Again, Ganun Diab, Director of Public Affairs and Religious Liberty for the Adventist World Church. Diab, who was a, a plenary speaker in the closing session of the event, addressed some 400 Christian leaders from 65 countries who represented a broad range of Christian traditions, including Eastern Orthodox, Evangelicals, Anglicans, and many independent churches. In an interview after the event, notice now, Diop said that the presence of Adventists at gatherings such as this, notice, is an important part of the work of General Conference, Public Affairs, and Religious Liberty Department, which is entrusted with the task of making the Adventist church more visible in the public realm. Now, when you hear those words, once again, to make uh, the Adventist church more visible in the public realm, can we be more visible while we are meeting with these fallen churches and Catholicism? No, we can only be more visible as we stay away from them, separated, separated from them, like the Bible says, be a peculiar people and to proclaim the message for this time. We cannot be more visible while we are in there. Can two, Amos says, can two walk together unless they are in some sort of agreement? The reason why we are together with them is because we have some kind of agreement with them. Notice the same article goes on to say, it says, he is now misquoting Sister White. He says, Ellen White describes the ministry of Christ on earth as mingling with men as one who desired their good, says the up. Mingling, being salt and light in the world, is at the heart of our mission as a Seventh-day Adventist. Let's pause there for a moment. Mingling together is at the heart of our mission because that's what Christ did. Is that how Christ did it? No, brothers and sisters. Christ did not mingle himself, did not go to Rome. He did not uh, attend uh, their uh, satanic rituals. He did not go and shake hands with them. He mingled with the common people wherever he would go. He mingled with them. He desired their good to uh, share the love of Jesus, the love of God uh, with them. That's how Christ mingled with them. Back to the screen. It says, uh, Diop, who also serves, notice with me, at the Global Christian Forum Oversight Com Committee. Pause again. Is there one of those uh, gathering, one of those ecumenical body that this man is not one of the leaders? Yes, brothers and sisters, he's in all of them as we looked at before. He's in all of them. Notice now, back to the screen again. Says, it provides a way to introduce Adventism to other Christians on our own terms, to learn about other denominations, and to help dispel, notice now, preju prejudices or misconceptions on both sides. Now think about this for a moment. 
So we don't want to be seen as prejudice. And uh, we want to dispel all of these misconceptions. What does that mean? Can we see what this man just said there? If he can say things like that, that means we are not preaching the three angels' messages. The Bible says Babylon is fallen, but not just one fallen, two fallen. Babylon is fallen and fallen because the first one is addressing, the first fallen, that is, is addressing the papacy. The second one is addressing the, her, do, I mean, her daughters. The fallen churches are past Protestantism. But if you preach this message today, it would be seen as a hate speech, as a, you being prejudiced. Well, we don't want to talk about these uh, differences, these doctrinal differences. We want to lay them aside. Now, again, uh, this is referring to this uh, gathering, uh, which is, again, uh, the global Christian form uh, gathering. But what is the mission of the Christian uh, global Christian form, uh, ga form gathering? What's their mission? It's unity. It's coming together. Notice with me. On the screen, it says, who are we? That's from the website. It says, the Global Christian Forum is a unique gathering of global Christian churches and organizations bringing together all the, notice now, the major streams of world Christianity. The GCF is an open space where all Christians can meet to nurture what? Unity. Again, pause. Can two walk together unless they have some kind of agreement. Can two unite together unless they are walking together? That's the question there. The reason why we are in this ecumenical movement, ecumenical body, and we are seeing this satanic ritual by the papacy, yet we are meeting with them, it's because we are part of this. Notice now back to the screen. Again, the GCF is an open space where all Christians can meet to nurture unity by fostering mutual respect and understanding as well as by addressing together common challenges. Same article goes on to say, this is also a time when the historic ecumenical movement is looking for creative ways forward. The GCF provides space for exploration of expressions of Christian unity previously unavailable due to limited contact or what? Or past wounds. The GCF does not seek to replace that which has been achieved through the careful and prayerful work of the churches in dialogue and common, notice now, theological discernment. We hope instead to build on growing trust and mutual respect in order to be a truly open space where we can continue together our journey with Christ. So that's their goal. That's who, he, who they are. And where did they get this? That's from the, straight from the Vatican. Lay aside the doctrinal differences. Don't talk about past wounds. It's time to, to heal the wound. That uh, not just uh, General Bertie had caused to Catholicism, but Martin Luther, John Haas, Jerome, all of these men that stood against this mighty power called the papacy that killed over a hundred million Christians because they stood for the word of God. That's the same power we were told to expose in these last days if we want to see Jesus to come again. But where is the organization? The main body of the organization, the Seventh-day Adventists, they're not exposing this. They are in association with the papacy. They have laid aside our doctrines, which are contrary, which, which oppose this ecumenical movement so that they could be in bed with Rome. Notice with me what Sister White says here. From Great Controversy 444, the wider diversity of belief in the Protestant churches is regarded by many as decisive proof that, notice now, no effort to secure a forced uniformity can ever be made. 
But there has been for years in churches of the Protestant faith a strong and growing sentiment in favor of a union based on what? Upon common points of doctrine. To secure such a union, the discussion of subjects upon which all were not agreed, however important they might be from a Bible standpoint, what must happen to those uh, points? They must necessarily be waived. Back to the screen again. That's exactly what we just read here from the Global Christian Forum about who we are. They said, again, the GCF provides space for exploration of expression of Christian unity, previously unavailable due to limited contact or past wounds. The GCF does not seek to replace that which has been achieved through the careful and prayerful work of the churches in dialogue and common theological discernment, we hope instead to build on growing trust and mutual respect in order to be a truly open space where we can continue together our journey with Christ. We cannot continue together this journey with Christ along with the apostate churches, along with the papacy. Can two walk together unless uh, they are in some type uh, of agreement? Can they walk uh, together? As Amos told us, uh, we need to seek the Lord. It's time to walk with the Lord. It's time to choose which God we are going to follow. It's time to choose on which side we, go, we are going to be. The general conference of Seventh-day Adventists is not on the side of Jesus Christ. They are on the side and in unison with the papacy. Go with me to the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings, uh, we're going to notice with me what the, the Word of God says in the book of uh, 2 Kings. And uh, we're looking at chapter, chapter 20. We need to walk uh, with the Lord and uh, with no one else. Notice with me, books of 2 Kings chapter 20, and uh, looking at uh, verse, uh, verse 3. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 3. Notice with me what the Word of God says uh, as you're turning uh, to the book of 2 Kings chapter 3, chapter 20, sorry, verse 3. The Bible says, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have done what? Walked before thee. How? How should we walk before God? In truth, not in uh, compromising. In truth, we shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free, and with a perfect heart, and uh, have done uh, that which is good in uh, thy sight. That's how we should walk with God, in truth, and in perfect, perfect heart. Let's go to the book of Psalm this time. Notice with me what the book of Psalm says uh, in chapter 16, uh, of the book of Psalm, chapter 16. Psalm chapter 16, notice with me what the Word of God says in verse 7. Psalm 16, verse 7. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord who have given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night seasons. I have, notice, set the Lord, who? The Lord, Jehovah, always before me because he is at my, at my right hand, I shall not be moved. So we must have the, the Lord at our right hand, walk together with him, and we shall not be moved. Leave the consequences with him. Chapter 26 of the same book this time, of Psalm. Psalm chapter 26. We must walk with the Lord and with no one else. Though no one comes with me, yet will I will follow, the song says. We are in Psalm chapter 26. Notice with me what the Word of God says in verse 9. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, what, what am I going to do? I will walk in my integrity, Redeem me and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place in the congregations. Will I bless uh, the Lord? We must walk in our integrity. That means walking uh, with uh, the Lord and Him only. Chapter 56 of the same book. Notice with me what uh, the psalmist says uh, in uh, chapter 56. 
we need to uphold the word of God and expose the papacy. Chapter 56, the Bible says in verse 13, let's begin in verse 10. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what men can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. Then the Bible says in verse 13, For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Will not thou deliver my feet from falling? That I may do what? Walk before God in the light of the living. So we must walk with God. That we must walk alongside God. Let Him direct our path. If we want to see the Master to come soon, we must expose the men of sin. Let's close with chapter 86 now of the same book. Chapter 86 of the book of Psalm. Notice with me what the Word of God says in chapter 86 of the book of Psalm. Verse 10, the Bible says, For thou art great, and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and now what will happen? I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. And what would happen? I will walk in thy truth. We need to walk with God. Walk as Enoch walked with God. Walk as Noah walk with God. And again, the Bible says, Enoch walked with God and God took him because he was no more. He had such a close relationship with God. He shunned the world. He exposed the things of the world. And he had chosen his masters. We must choose our master at this time. As we look at the, what the men of sin is doing at this time, many souls are being lost, are dying in their ignorance, are being deceived at this time because of, of lack of messengers to expose the iniquity of Rome. Brothers and sisters, Jesus has given you and I, as Seventh-day Adventists, a great mission, a, this great privilege to proclaim the message for this time. And as we proclaim it, the righteousness of the Son of God and expose the papacy. We are told again in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 that will usher the second coming of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Loving Father which art in heaven, we thank you for your marvelous truth. We thank you for revealing these things unto babes. You did not reveal it to those who think that they are wise. Anyone of us cannot take this message to this world as long as we are willing. Our people, Lord, your people have been deceived by the leaders, but help them to open their eyes and to walk with you alone, not with men. Help them not to put their trust in men, but in you alone. Forgive us of all our sins. In Jesus' name, amen.